Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Algebra Tutor. And in this section, we're going to uh, tackle inverse functions or uh, inverses of functions. Uh, you know, there's an inverse to everything in life. Uh, multiplication, the opposite of it is uh, division, and addition, the opposite of it is subtraction. So the inverse function can sort of be seen as the opposite of whatever function you were talking about to begin with. So if you were given a function, you can calculate its inverse, and that can sort of be seen as the opposite of that function. So let's just look at kind of an example here and show you what an inverse is here by, by actually working something out. If you had a function, and you knew that f of 3 was equal to, let's say, 7, okay, it's just an example. I don't know what the function is. All I know is that f of 3 is 7, okay? Uh, then the inverse, written as uh, f of negative 1 like this, okay, that would be called the inverse, has the property that f of 7 is 3, okay? So that's really important to, to, to tackle and to understand. If you have, this is the inverse function, if you have a function so that when you plug in 3 you get 7, and that function is something, then you can always, almost always anyway, define an inverse so that if you plug in 7, you get 3. Okay, so this is a different function. It will look different, but it's related to the original function. I'll show you how to find that in a minute, okay? So similarly, uh, if you knew that f of 1 was equal to 3, then you would know that f inverse of 3 was equal to 1. Uh, and you would know, for instance, f of uh, 101 is equal to 5, then you would know that the inverse function evaluated at 5 would be 101. So it's, it's a real simple thing here. And then in general, because of what we're talking about here, the inverse function evaluated with f of x, so f of x plugged into the inverse function is going to be equal to x, and f of the inverse function is also equal to x. And these things right here are called the cancellation properties. Of, inver of inverses. Okay, and what does this mean? This is important for you to remember here. Okay, if you take a function okay, and you plug it into its inverse, you're going to get back x because you can see what's going on here, like in the case above us here. If f of 1 is 3, then f of inverse evaluated at 3 is 1. So if I take the uh, opposite function and evaluate it in its inverse, I'm just going to get back x, okay? So it's sort of reaching in and reaching into what I've evaluated here. So if f of 1 is 3, then f inverse evaluated at 3 gives me 1, so I'm evaluating f inverse of f of x, and so it's basically these are kind of kind of cancel each other is what you can really sort of think about. They're canceling each other, leaving you with x, and these canceling each other here, leaving you with x. It's kind of the best way to think about it here. Okay. The other thing I want to mention is, in order for an, uh, a function to have an inverse, I'm going to go ahead and write this down. In order for f of x to have an inverse, it must be a one-to-one -one function. It must be a one-to-one -one 